Chad, this is the ultimate widescreen TV yeah. right here. And it's, <laughs> no and it's 360 and it's three dimensional. And it has scent. <laughs> it has scent, appeals <laughs> to the senses at all levels, <laughs> and you just need to take it in. Fred Perry once said that the woods are a friendly place. And he didn't say, throw all caution to win and go running through the woods and you're gonna be safe. But it's a friendly place in that it will accept you to a point, mm -hmm. and you can learn how to acclimate in and, and study everything and how it interacts. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Fred Bear. I mean, Fred Bear is the icon when it comes to bow hunting. Yeah, father of bow hunting. I, I mean, he's known by a lot of things. I, I, you know, the gentleman woodsman, uh, the man with the Borsalino hat, mm -hmm. uh, the father of bow hunting. All those things fit, and he was a wonderful human being. He's the reason I got into bow hunting. I used to play Fred Bear, well, let me face it. When I was a young guy in college, I'd put the hat on and, <laughs> and, and I know what I was doing, mm -hmm. but I would carry the, the Fred Bear bow, you know, and I would go into the woods and I would, I would be Fred Bear. Here is a fedora hat that Fred Bear He did, he gave me that gave you. back in 83. He signed it and uh, he was aware of uh, our high school bow hunting club. This was sort of his donation and, uh, and uh, offer of good luck. Uh, to the kids and he said, you know, uh, the kids want to wear this thing, uh, uh, make sure that they can pop it on their head and go bow hunting and, and uh, maybe they'll get a little, little extra So you there. actually loaned this hat out to students of yours at Grayson County High School to go hunt and they brought it back, right? They actually did. <laughs> and uh, here's the proof right here. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it's quite worn. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way Fred wanted it. And we actually made Fred honorary member of our high school bow club. and. In exchange for this, I gave him one of our caps. Oh, that's which cool. Which wasn't quite the same. It was, <laughs> it was a bill cap with a logo on it, but uh, he wore it proudly. That says a lot about Fred Bear, yourself, and, and your students. They, they respected the piece that they all brought it They back. knew who he was. That is great. Fred showed me that there was more to bow hunting than taking world record animals. Well, and now, just a little bit of time I've spent talking to you, hearing your passion of bow hunting, seeing what you're doing here with your piece of property, and now looking at some of your artwork. For you, it doesn't have to be hunting. No. It's all about the emotions and the feelings that you get and trying to share that with other people. Absolutely. My training when I was in art school at Murray State, I majored in painting. Mm -hmm. So I look at things as a visual artist and I carry the camera and when I'm on a hunt is when usually I shoot these things. I usually don't go out and say, I'm gonna shoot a cover today. Mm -hmm. It's in my backpack, the camera is. And if something clicks, and if something maybe I've just experienced, I just repeat it, I set it up and I capture it. You're not seeing people's faces on a lot of your photography, right? Correct. And you're not seeing the game a lot of times. It's the pursuit. When I go out and I capture these things, some of the images are similar to the images that, that moved me when I was a young bow hunter. There's, there's something about the, being a predator and being part of a, the scheme of things and slipping through the woods and trying to approach an animal without the animal knowing that you're there. It's natural and uh, there's something about it. Uh, this is very satisfying. Well, and I know that my amount of time in the woods and my passion for it, I feel like I'm a piece of that puzzle. Mm -hmm. When I'm in the woods, I feel like I'm right where I need to be. That's right. So Gary, I couldn't help walking by and noticing these arrows stuck up here in this tree. I'm sure that you have some meaning here. Absolutely. <laughs> when we bought the property, we erected this uh, game pole mm -hmm. and uh, established a little camp area here. 
I told my son-in-law, whenever you take your first deer on our property with a bow, take your arrow and lash it to this tree and I'll do the same. And it'll serve as long as uh, it lasts yeah. <laughs> as a memento and a memory. You remember exactly what that deer was, what kind of deer you took on this? Yeah, this it was, it was, it, it, it was. I do, I do remember it wasn't far, it was taken on the ground. So just one glance at that arrow, yeah. It, it all bring, comes back. Brings it back, yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, I know you got some more grandsons on the way and some granddaughters. Hopefully there's a whole pile of arrows last year. Yeah, that we've tree got a pretty good sized tree here. I think we've got room <laughs> for a few more arrows. <laughs> Perfect. Got some deer tracks here. This little blind setting here. <laughs> My grandson, who's five years old, mm -hmm. he refers this as William's blind because his name is William. <laughs> and this is where he will tell you that he learned to tie a knot. Oh, really? We were setting up a blind, uh, anticipating seeing some turkeys. And I'm, you know, working on tying it off on some of the other trees. And, and I looked over and here's my little five-year-old grandson and he's wrapping vigorously and somehow he pulls it through and it catches and it's solid. And he looks up and he kind of does his hands like this and he says, look, pal, Paul, I tied a knot. <laughs> He refers to this as his blind, where he learned how to tie a knot. So it's probably gonna just decay over time. <laughs> if that is enough to keep him excited, to keep him coming back to the stand and, the, and getting in this blind, who knows, 15 years, he put the time in, this might be the place to be. There's a story behind everything, you know. One of the things that's really important about some of the covers is I've been able to use some people I know on the covers. Probably my most important cover was I was able to use my father. And my father passed away in 2013, but he was my hunting companion. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the guy that sat with me watching those Fred Bear films. Mm -hmm. He was the guy that uh, went with me to Alabama to uh, experience the Fred Bear bow hunting school together. And uh, I was able to take him out into the field one day and uh, he didn't always remember things the way, of course, he once had remembered. But I took him to places that he should have been somewhat familiar with. We'd camped there, we'd deer hunted there, here in the county. And he carried a bow and he wore a bull plaid shirt and an old 1940 fedora that belonged to him. And I shot him for a cover. And this is rare for you because you can actually see a person's face, which you didn't do quite often, That's right? something that I, I rarely do, but I wanted uh, people that knew him to, uh, to know it was him. Mm -hmm. But that's back when my dad was, was sick. And I did a story for the same magazine called uh, Reflections. Mm -hmm. And it was about how I took him out that day and he remembered, he reflected mm -hmm. in ways that we didn't know he was still capable of remembering. And this is at a point where he didn't even know my name. Mm -hmm. He would refer to me as one of his, meaning he's my son. And I heard, I got more input from that piece than any other thing I've ever done because people who had had similar problems in their family being out in the woods with family members and, and or people you're just close to, you'll never forget those. You know, you can you can be at some point in your life where you can't get out anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, or, you know whether you're sick or not, you, maybe you just physically can't can't do the things that you used to do, but you can still have those memories, and they're precious, and so you know you never know when you're going to make a memory that's gonna be something that stays with you, becomes uh, something extra special, not only to you, but those that you share it with. And the outdoors is just a place to, for that to happen so, so often. You obviously have a passion about the outdoors and archery. And it really kind of makes me take a step back and, and think, man, you really need to take uh, advantage of these opportunities and 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 you do a great job of documenting it as well well there's there's a history to, to bow hunting that i i think people would uh, definitely uh, benefit from knowing mm -hmm. uh, it's a rich history it might enrich the experience of just going into the woods today as a modern bow hunter uh, having uh, having a sense of what who's walked those paths before you the final story is enjoy the experience it's not all about the harvest the take absolutely enjoy not. every hunt and if you come in frustrated you probably have something you could take from that 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 day and think wow I spent a day bow hunting that was a good day absolutely mm -hmm.